السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا وبعد قال الله تعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون أياما معدودات وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم صلوات الخمس والجمعة إلى الجمعة ورمضان إلى رمضان مكفرات ما بينهن إذا اجتنبت الكبائر وأيضا قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من صام رمضان إيمانا وإحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه ومن قام رمضان إيمانا وإحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم حاميدا ومسليا ومتوكلا على الله وبعد Respected brothers, elders and sisters in Islam This Jumu'ah definitely is the last Jumu'ah in this blessed and sacred month of Sha'ban the next Jumu'ah definitely will be the first Jumu'ah in Ramadan. Ramadan is just two days away, two or three days away from us, knocking at our doors, ready to enter. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to congratulate the Muslims at the approach of Ramadan in order to make them aware of its magnificence, great significance, importance, and merits. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to emphasize the great rewards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give to a person in observing the blessed month of Ramadan. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to address the Sahaba and he would tell them, the month of Ramadan is approaching you. A blessed month, a holy month, a sacred month. A month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made fasting by day an obligation and ibadah by night optional. A month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open wide the gates of paradise and Allah will close and lock up the gates of the hellfire. A month in which the shayateen are chained. A month in which lies a night better than a thousand months. How can Muslims not congratulate each other? How can Muslims not rejoice on the opening of the doors of Jannah? How can we not? How can we not rejoice and express jubilation? On the closing of the gates and the doors of the hellfire. How can we still waste time away. When we know for a fact. That the shayateen and the devils are chained. 
So let us reflect and make use of the golden opportunities the blessed month of Ramadan has to offer us. And let us not procrastinate and waste time in the pursuits of trivialities and the mundane things of this world. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Himself named the month of fasting Ramadan. Ramadan was not given its name by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is the only name of the only month mentioned in Quran. If you look at the other 12 Islamic months, none of their names are mentioned in Quran. Ramadan is the only month that its name, its name is mentioned in Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made Quran or Allah has written Quran or Quran came into exist and existence thousands of years before even the universe came into existence. Quran came into existence thousands of years before this universe even was created. And the name Ramadan was already mentioned in Quran. I have recited the ayah in the beginning. Shahru Ramadan. Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. It is the month of Ramadan in which the Quran was completely revealed, was, co- was revealed from Lawh al-Mahfuz to Sama'u al-Dunya. If you look at the word Ramadan itself, it means burn up. To burn baked clay, to burn up something. Our sins that we have been committing for 330 days in the year by keeping the first day of fasting. By fasting for the very first day of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts burning our sins away. Allah starts remitting and removing our sins away. So that when we would have kept the 29 or 30 days of Ramadan, then our sins for the 360 days would have been omitted, would have been burned out so much so that when the end of Ramadan comes, we would emerge from this blessed month of Ramadan, pure and clean from sins, the day we were given birth to. There is a dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he used to make constantly in Ramadan and out of Ramadan. A very comprehensive dua. What is this dua? Allahumma la tahrimna khayra ma indak لِشَرِّ مَا عِنْدَنَا Allahumma la tahrimna khayra ma indak لِشَرِّ مَا عِنْدَنَا O Allah, don't deprive us of your favors because of the wrong that we do. O Allah, don't hold us against our wrong. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had to take us to task for our wrong, for our mistakes, for our faults, Allah says in the Quran, "Law yu'akhidu nas bima kasabu ma taraka ala zahriha min dabba." If Allah subhanahu wa taala had to punish us, if Allah had to take us to task for my wrong, for my sins, and your wrong and your shortcomings. Leave human beings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not let even an animal stay alive on planet earth. The nahusat of our sins is so dangerous that it can wipe out the entire creation. It can wipe out the entire creation. So my dear respected brothers and elders, do we really ask ourselves, do we really deserve Ramadan in spite of our wrongs? Do we really deserve this month of Allah showering 
and pouring down his blessings and his rahmah and his forgiveness upon us. Look at our wrongs at one side. Look at our sins at one side. Look at the mercy of Allah at the other side. Look at the compassion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the other side. Yet do we deserve another Ramadan? Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so kind. He is so merciful that He is given us once again another Ramadan. And we should be grateful and thankful to Allah. Our heads should be in sujood. And we make dua to Allah to make us live to see the other two days. And make us live through the whole entire month of Ramadan. Because only this week you had two or three janazah. Ah, those people never had a chance to witness Ramadan. Never had a chance to, wit to see, to fast for another day. To pray another salah. To pray another taraweeh. They never had a chance and they will never have a chance again. Because that chance is gone. And it will never come back. But you and I, we are still breathing. We still have breath in this body. But So let us not waste the time. Let us make use of it and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this tremendous and great blessing. You see, Ramadan is a type of spiritual school which you and I enter every year. But yet, unfortunately, only a few of us graduate. Ramadan is like what? A spiritual school. We all enter the school every year for a month. But very few of us graduate. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through His kind mercy has allowed us to come back to this school year after year. That perhaps, perhaps we eventually graduate through the lessons that we draw from the blessed month of Ramadan. Every breath a fasting person takes, the reward of that is equivalent to tasbih, glorifying Allah. You breathe. How many times a day you breathe? When you breathe while you are fasting, every breath, exhaling, inhaling, is equivalent to the glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sleep of a fasting person is equate to ibadah. You are sleeping when you are fasting. That does not mean that you sleep from morning till evening. And you say it's ibadah. It doesn't mean that. You are tired and you go to sleep. That sleep also is an ibadah. So it is only right for us to welcome the blessed month of Ramadan with forgiveness. With tawbah. With repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is one of the best time in the year, one of the best season. And the day of Jumu'ah is one of the best day of the week. The companions of the Prophet ﷺ would observe that in Ramadan, Rasulullah ﷺ used to increase in three things. What he used to do? Rasulullah ﷺ in Ramadan used to increase in doing three things. Number one, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would dramatically increase in his ibadah. Now let me draw your attention here. Our ibadah collectively come together cannot equate the ibadah of Rasulullah out of Ramadan, much less in Ramadan. What Allah says about the Nabi of Allah, Ya ayyuhal muzzammil qum al-layla illa qalila Ya ayyuhal muddathir qum fa'anthir Inna laka fin nahari sabahan tawila Allah describes the night of Rasulullah Allah describes the day of the Nabi of Allah And yet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Out of Ramadan would stand in salah in front of Allah, so much so that his blessed feet would become swollen. Had we ever stand up in Tarawi Salah and our feet have become swollen in Ramadan? Huh? Never. We run away. Eight rakat, ten rakat, and we gone. We are gone. Where is that? 
Where is that tanafus? Allah wants to see that tanafus. Allah wants to see that competition from you and I. Fa'arullaha min anfusikum khaira. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah knows you are tired. Allah knows you had a hard day of working. Allah knows you fasted and the day was hot. But still you fasted, still you come in the night in Taraweeh, and still you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why Rasulullah says, مَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانَ وَإِحْتِسَابَ غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِ One who stands in the night before Allah, in salah, in ibadah, with your tiredness, with you being, you being tired, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. Allah loves that. Now look at my servants, even though they are tired, it is the month of Ramadan. They want to take from my treasures, and my treasures are open. I will give them unlimited. I will give to them unlimited. So one thing Rasulullah used to do is to increase his ibadah. Let not your ibadah in Ramadan be restricted only to your five daily salah. Alhamdulillah, that is ghanima. You pray your five daily salah in Ramadan. And make sure you pray your five daily salah if possible with jama'ah in Ramadan. And increase your nawafil. Do your ishraq if you have time. Do your extra salah if you have time. Because every nawafil in Ramadan it goes up in rewards like that to a fard out of Ramadan. We should be eager. We should be eager enough to grab every blessing, every thawab, every reward we can get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would open his heart and his hand more generously in Ramadan than out of Ramadan. We know that the generosity of the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam out of Ramadan knows no bounds. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you think he was poor? Rasulullah was not poor. He chose to live a life of poverty. But he was not poor. Why? Because Allah says in the Quran, وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّمَا غَنِمْتُمْ فَأَنَّ لِلَّهِ خُمُسَهُ وَلِلْرَسُولِ From the booties of war, one-fifth of that goes to the Nabi of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had offered him the Mount of Tihama to be gold and silver and walk with him wherever he goes. Travel with him wherever he goes. But he chose a life of abstinence, a life of poverty. Yet whatever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had, he would give it out, out of Ramadan. And in Ramadan, he would become much more generous. <coughs> Third thing, he would increase his weeping in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fear of Allah and in asking Allah for repentance. Out of Ramadan, the hadith comes that the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to seek Allah's forgiveness more than 70 times a day. How many times do I ask Allah for forgiveness in a day? How many times do you ask Allah for forgiveness in a day? And when Allah says in Surah Al-Fatih, Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina liyaghfira laka Allahu ma taqaddama min dhanbika wa ma taakhar the Nabi of Allah had no sins, had no faults, had no mistakes. All were forgiven, past, present, previous, everything. Why? Why he used to ask Allah for forgiveness? Why would he repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so many times in the day? Indirectly to show us that, oh insan, we are weak. We were created weak. And we need to ask Allah for forgiveness. Allah's door of forgiveness is always open. Allah's door of forgiveness is always open. The Prophet ﷺ used to wait anxiously for the arrival of Ramadan. He had such great regards for Ramadan that he would supplicate. The Prophet ﷺ used to make dua from two months before. From two months before for Ramadan. Allahumma barik lana fi rajaba wa sha'ban. Wa ballighna Ramadan. Wa ballighna Ramadan. Oh Allah, take us to the blessed month of Ramadan. So this 
auspicious opportunity is once more knocking at our doors. This is indeed a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This insan, this human being that is, was given everything by Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given everything to us, every ni'mah. And the object and the purpose of this ni'mah that we receive from Allah is for us to be grateful to Allah, to be thankful to Allah, to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ni'mah that, that make that, that we should be doing that. Every ni'mah of Allah. Allah does not need my gratitude. Allah does not need my ibadah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghani. Allahu ghani wa antum al fuqara. If all of us, we do ibadah together. From morning till evening and all the creations, all the jinn from the time of Adam, all the human beings from the time of Adam, <coughs> living now, all coming to, until the day of Qiyamah, all the jinn kind from then, now coming to Qiyamah, every angel, everyone, start obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and does not disobey Allah even for one fraction of a second. One fraction of a second, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Your collective ibadah will not increase my greatness and my kingdom one bit. Understand? My ibadah and your ibadah would not increase Allah, would not make Allah higher or bigger. On the other hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if all your collective disobedience, you disobey Allah, you become like shaitan in disobedience and every other creation disobey Allah. Your collective disobedience will not diminish or decrease my kingdom one bit. We need Allah. We need ibadah to get closer to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need us. That is why Allah has given us ropes of hopes. Opportunities upon opportunities. These opportunities come periodically in our lives. And when we don't, when we don't take these opportunities, when we don't go forward, then the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says about that person, that Ramadan comes and he let it, let it go by. Ba'uda man adraka Ramadan falam yughfar la. May Allah distant that person away from Jahannam. May Allah, sorry, may Allah distant that person away from Jannah. May Allah's curse be in that person who witnessed the blessed month of Ramadan. Let it come, let it go without gaining forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear respected brothers and elders, scientifically it is proven that a bad habit a bad habit can be broken in 15 days. Scientifically, it is proven. Anybody who has a bad habit, diligently, if you work on it, it can be broken in 15 days. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us double the time in Ramadan. 30 days, not only 15 days, but 30 days. Let's break those bad habits. Whatever are those habits of ours, let's eliminate them. Let's leave them behind. You know your bad habits. I know my bad habits. We don't need to go in details. Use Ramadan and utilize Ramadan for eradicating and removing these bad habits. For example, for example, if a person had the habit out of Ramadan for not praying Salah, regularly, not praying his five daily salah, then use Ramadan to pray your five daily salah. Build upon that. Huh? And start from Ramadan. If a sister does, is not in the habit of wearing her hijab out of Ramadan, and now Ramadan comes, let her utilize the month of Ramadan to build upon that and to put on that hijab. Let us not make our ibadah in Ramadan seasonal. 
Let it not be restricted only to the season of Ramadan. Because if it is restricted to the season of Ramadan, those habits will not be broken. Let what we do in Ramadan, whatever Allah will give us the tawfiq and the ability to do in Ramadan, let us build upon that and continue upon that throughout the other 11 months of the year. You know, Alama Rumi rahmatullahi alayhi, he said something very amazing. He said, yesterday I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Yesterday I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Today I am wise, so I'm going to change myself. Be wise, don't be clever. Try to change yourself. Do enough for yourself so that you can get the benefits insha'Allah. Another thing, there is a great link and great connection between Ramadan and the Qur'an. I recited the ayah in the beginning, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. Qur'an was revealed in Ramadan. Not only Qur'an, but all the previous books. All the previous books were revealed also in Ramadan. Ibrahim alayhi salam received his scripture on the first of the third of Ramadan. Dawud alayhi salam received the Zabur on the twelfth of Ramadan. Musa alayhi salam received the Torah on the sixth of Ramadan. Isa alayhi salam received the Injil on the thirteenth of Ramadan. And the first revelation that came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the cave of Hira came on the 18th of Ramadan. On the 18th of Ramadan. So there is a great link between Quran and Ramadan. Huh? Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Jibreel alayhi salam used to come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Ramadan and rehearse and review everything that was revealed previously to the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Recitation of Quran in Ramadan is very virtuous. Imam Shafi rahmatullahi alayhi, the great Imam Shafi'i, and this is not in Ramadan, but outside of Ramadan. Outside of Ramadan. He would open the Qur'an after Salatul Isha. He would open the Qur'an after Salatul Isha. And he would close it just before the time of Fajr Salah. You think he would open it and look at it? He wouldn't just open it and look at it. He would recite. This used to be his ma'mool. Imam Shafi'i rahmatullahi alayhi. Open the Quran after Isha and he would only close it, only close it just before Fajr. Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Al A'adham, the great Imam Abu Hanifa, he used to complete one Quran in every morning and a second Quran every evening in Ramadan. Every morning, one Quran completed, and in the evening, also another Quran. And he would listen to three complete Qur'an in the entire month of Ramadan. So reading and listening. Huh? So 30 and 30, 60, 63 Qur'an in Ramadan used to be the ma'mool of Imam Al-A'zam, Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi. We may not be able to do that. That may be impossible for me or you to do. But at least we can make one khatam. Huh? At least we can start and make one khatam if we can, right? One day. And the, and the prescription is given that if you, after every salah, you recite certain amount of pages of the Quran, five daily salah, you recite certain amount of pages, you can finish the Quran in Ramadan. You don't have to fix a separate time. Ten minutes after every salah, read about four to five pages and you will see that, that insha'Allah, by the ending of the month, you will complete the Qur'an. When you keep the first day of fasting, when you keep the first day of fasting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive the person's minor sins. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also mentioned 
that anyone who expresses joy and happiness on the arrival of Ramadan, on the coming of Ramadan, that you are so happy, whether you are fasting or you are not fasting, whether you can fast or you cannot fast, with excuse for, of course, but you are so joy, you are so filled with joy that you are so happy that you, you, you know, you, you are so happy that Ramadan is coming again. Ramadan is coming again. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, out of that happiness and because of that happiness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you for your sins. Allah will forgive you for your sins. لَوْ أَرَادَ اللَّهُ أَنْ يُعَذِّبَ أُمَّةَ مُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وسلم مَا أَعْطَاهُمْ رَمَضَانٍ وَقُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٍ Ramadan is such a gift from Allah, such a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Sayyidina Ali radiyallahu ta'ala and he said, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had wanted to punish this ummah collectively, collectively, everyone has his own test in life. This life is not without testing. Everyone will be tested in some way or the other. Some people will be tested with their wealth by Allah giving it to them. Some will be tested by Allah taking it away from them. Some will be tested with their family. Some will be tested with their children. Some will be tested with their health. Some will be tested with sickness. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ we cannot get away from being tested in life. It's part of life. Sometime or the other, Allah will test each one of us. And Allah says, لَيَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Give glad tidings to those who emerge and come out from these different type of tests who have patience and they emerge. Give them glad tidings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, test is not a punishment from Allah. Understand that. If Allah put situations upon you, if Allah put conditions upon you, that's not adab. That's not punishment from Allah. That's a test from Allah. That's imtihan from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So going back to what I was saying, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu said, لَوْ أَرَادَ اللَّهُ أَنْ يُعَذِّبَ أُمَّةَ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمِ If Allah wanted to punish this ummah collectively, مَا أَعْطَاهُمْ رَمَضَان Then Allah would have never favored this ummah with the blessed month of Ramadan. Because, أَنْ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Surah Al-Ikhlas Because the month of Ramadan is full of rahmah, is full of blessings from Allah. It draws, it attracts the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when there is mercy of Allah, where there is mercy of Allah, there is no adab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where there is mercy of Allah, there is no adab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the month of Ramadan comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decorates Jannah. Allah decorates Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to Jannah and says, Very soon, very soon my servants will be placed into you. Get prepared for them. Get prepared for them. The angels, the malaika, even the ones carrying the sublime throne of Allah. In Ramadan, their only duty is to make dua, is to continuously make dua. Say ameen, actually on the dua of those who fast in Ramadan. This is what they do. What they do? They say Ameen on the dua of the people who fast in Ramadan. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh Allah, have you favored any other nation like you have favored me and my nation, the Bani Israel? How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one, Musa alayhi salam, a great prophet of Allah, Jalil al-Qadr, Nabi of Allah, the Bani Israel, the people of Israel, Allah give them many blessings, but I'm going to tell you of three, three blessings that Allah grant them, Allah give to them. Number one, for 40 years, Allah used to send down food from the skies. Never you had to work, never go to a job, no profession. Men and salwa would descend every morning and they didn't have to put it in the refrigerator for tomorrow. No storage for tomorrow. 
Because from the time they start storing, Allah stopped giving. <laughs> this is what had happened. When they started storing for tomorrow, Allah stopped giving to them. So every day, every day, man and salwa would come down for them. One ni'mah. Second ni'mah that Allah blessed them with, they would not see sunlight. They would not see heat. The cloud would shade them and shelter them all the time. The Bani Israel. The third, that they would be born with clothing. You and I are born without clothing. They were born with clothing. And as they grow, the clothes would also grow on them. The clothes on their body would also grow. So they didn't have to buy suits and buy another pair and buy another shirt and another pants, whatever. No. As they grow, the clothes also grow with them, would grow with them. So these were the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Bani Israel. Right? And Musa alayhi salam, the Nabi of Allah. So Musa alayhi salam said, Oh Allah, you have privileged me with speaking to you directly. Musa taklima. Musa spoke to Allah directly from the Mount of Tur. Oh Allah, have you favored anyone else with such favor? Have you privileged anyone else with such privilege? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in reply said, Oh Musa, in the ummah of the last prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there will be some servants of mine. There will be some servant of mine. I will favor them with the blessed month of Ramadan. And because of fasting in Ramadan, they will get closer to me than you did. They would get closer to me than you did. And when the evening comes and they will make dua. Dua is like speaking to Allah. Because of, of the, the, the thirst that they will go through. Of the hot day and their lips will become dry. And they will get thirsty and tired. When they raise my hand, their hands in dua to me. I will accept their duas. Allah has taken this ahad. Allah has taken this promise upon Himself. Allah don't need to take promise. But Allah is just to show the value of a fasting person in the sight of Allah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not reject the dua of a fasting person. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that anyone, anyone who fasts for one day of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and he goes thirsty in a hot day for Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would grant him water to drink from the hawth of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of Qiyamah. And anyone who goes hungry and thirsty because of fasting on the day of Qiyamah when we all will be resurrected, and go before Allah to give an account for our lives. Those people who fasted in Ramadan, went through those little bit qurbani and little bit sacrifice in Ramadan, Allah will separate them. And they will be told today, Kulu washrabu hani bima aslaftum fil ayyam al khaliya. Kulu eat today and drink today for what you had left behind because of me. What you left behind because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today is your turn to eat and to drink. So my dear respected brothers and elders, let's connect ourselves with Ramadan. Very, very important that we connect ourselves with this blessed month of Ramadan and utilize every opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give to us. And I will end with this last quote. Live your life like every day is Ramadan and the Akhirah will become your Eid. Live your life like every day is Ramadan and the Akhirah will become your Eid. Once again, as I've said, welcome this blessed month. A day or two remaining, prepare yourself. And I'm not saying what I mean, prepare yourself, prepare your refrigerators with all the samosas and all the other things. I'm not talking about that. Prepare yourselves mentally, physically, spiritually, professionally, psychologically, emotionally. That I'm going to go forward. I'm going to do whatever it takes, inshallah. Because I don't know. I am not aware if this might be my last Ramadan in my life. So I would spend it as if it will be my last Ramadan, inshallah. Many were gone before us. Many were gone before us. They don't have an opportunity again. Those who are living now... Utilize it. Make use of it. Because whatever is coming in the future, we don't know. 
That is only in the hands of Allah. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that. So I appeal to each and every one of you, inshallah, and myself, let's use and utilize the days and the nights of Ramadan, inshallah, to get closer to Allah, to ask Allah for forgiveness, to ask Allah for tawbah, to ask Allah for His mercy, and in the end for Allah to free us and emancipate us from the fire of Jahannam. Wa akhiru da'wana, and alhamdulillah, Uh, there are a few announcements here.